You know, there's a great problem of movies is that they're always old fashioned. It takes too long to make a movie. By the time your idea is on the screen, it's already dead. I gotta get up real early in the morning tomorrow morning, you know? I have a, like an eight o'clock call. Okay, so you will good. Get up early? We'll mm -hmm. get up early. I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep if you're here. Why not? This I'm is the third time you've told me this now. I'm I... sorry, but I just... When are you gonna uh, be able to go to sleep with me here? Don't you think getting to I just somebody... learned to sleep by myself. It was very hard to learn to sleep by myself, and now I know how to do it, and... You know, I sleep right here. I got this side of the bed. It's comfortable. I know, I know. I'm that. sorry. I know that everybody... It would be nicer. It would be better in every way if I could feel comfortable and I could have you sleep over and it would be easy for me, but it just isn't easy. I'm sorry. I am, but... I'm maybe, maybe just, um... We'll, you'll fall asleep with me here, then I'll, I'll creep out. It'll be nice, warm. I'm just afraid that I won't fall asleep in the first place. Look, I, not everybody wants a white picket fence, you know. Everyone I just... should, you know. It's not very romantic. We've all been taught in school and we all take our hats off to the Founding Fathers' notion that all men are created equal. We now have to face the fact that all men and women are created equal. And uh, we have swallowed that uh, bitter pill uh, and found that it went down perfectly easily. I'm alone now. I'm finally learning how to do it, and it makes me comfortable. I like to wake up alone. I've known almost half a year. We've never stayed over at each other's place yet. You think that's... But there has been a kind of pollution, which is a strong word, but still it is a sort of pollution. The idea that, uh, that uh, we are a single animal, male and female, and that the difference is negligible. I don't think it's, it's terrible to want to sleep by yourself. I feel more comfortable talking, that way. I wake up alone. I have my own cup of coffee. It's easy for me. I understand and, that. And I... Look, I understand that. I'm not talking about moving in, you know. I was just talking about sleeping over. It just seems to me a little strange that you get up, you brush your teeth, you get rid of me, and you want your own little world here. I don't understand it. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Come in. I'm enjoying getting to know you. Women are occupying an entirely new position in society, occupying it by force of a revolution which they may eventually lose. But on the other hand, they may win it. And if they win it completely, who is to say that democracy will result and that the spouse may not be created again and that we will be the spouse? I'm going to see you the day after tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. OK. Mm-hmm. Oh, you scared of getting the, having to brush your teeth again or what? <laughs> You're not giving me a real kiss because you've brushed your teeth. I no. swear to God, that's what I think is happening. No, I'm not giving you a real kiss because it's time for me to go to sleep. Well, maybe you don't want to go to sleep. No, maybe I need to go to sleep. As the world gets more and more populated and there's less and less room and there are the apartments in which marriages are supposed to work get smaller and smaller, 
More and more people are going to rush out in the street and kill everybody they can find. see LA from up here you know I'm always down there and I never realized it is anything to look at at all yeah but the weather that's what's so terrific here is this great weather yeah that's not the new is it well I'm gonna take advantage of it and go down and get a swim or at least sit by the pool anyway in February are you nuts to me it's freezing so what are you doing out here business as usual real estate business um, anything I should know about since you've taken so much interest in our business up to now, huh? Well, you're taking care of it for me. I know it's in good hands and I don't have to worry about it. It's a very nice feeling. So you can just loaf out here. I'm not loafing. I'm hardly loafing. I'm working yeah, very you're hard. You're working? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Art isn't work to you, right? Uh, Film isn't work. Creative work doesn't count. You're like daddy, you know? Uh, sure. You, you have to get up and go to the office every morning at nine, then you'll understand what work is. Yeah, you have to be on a set 12, 14, 16 hours a day. You'll understand. <laughs> Let's play. Everybody Let's what play. To do and trying to figure out how everything should work. Sure. Yeah, sure. Are you happy? Uh, just a general philosophical question for yes and no answer. No, no, no. I mean, have you found somebody you enjoy? I haven't seen you in so long. I, I never get to see you anymore now that we live on opposite coasts. And, I, you know, talking on the phone, I can't get an impression from you. You always say you're okay. You don't say good, you don't say bad, and I can't tell. Well, you know, I'm staying reasonably healthy physically, and no, I, no, I don't keep in good shape. That. I don't care about that. I mean, how are you, you know, you, are you ever going to get married? I tried it at least, you know. I mean, it didn't well, work. I'd like to try it, you know. I'd like to, even short of that, try just having a regular, consistent relationship with one woman. But I always get messed up. I mean, there's something, there's something about me. It's just it doesn't work out. I mean, how can it be that it doesn't work out? There's something in me that spoils it from working out. Like you know, well, like I do things that make it not work in the first place. Like I have these many relationships with married women, that um, then when they leave, I'm lonely. And if I like one of them, then it's even worse. And um, then if I go out with women where it would be available, where would be suitable to have a relationship. I, I do something to mess it up, like I do it with two of them at once and, and, and try to keep the two things going. You can't just schedule them right. So sometimes I, I have to try to get out of seeing somebody because I'm supposed to be seeing somebody else. Sometimes I'm not seeing anybody and then I don't know what to do with myself, so I'm lonely. And then when I'm with them, I'm lonely anyway. So it's, it's uh, I don't know. It's, um, and I always tell myself, you know, I'm really going to try to stop doing these things and find some. I got a great idea. While you're out here, why don't we have a party for you? While I'm, while, while a you're, party while for you're the objective I, of me to meet people? I mean, yeah. that's, I that would tell. make me very uncomfortable, you know, that that's the reason. That I, I won't tell them that that's the reason. We'll say we're just having a party and I'll introduce you to a lot of people. I've got a lot of terrific women friends, you know, and they've all gone through the same kind of thing. They can't seem to get relationships going. I don't know why. Everybody I know, you know, is in the exact same condition in one way or another. None of them quite as weird as you. These are all actresses, writers, Film people, artists. Okay, you know my opinion of actresses. I mean, you know they they they. I don't care about your opinion. I don't want to get back to your obnoxious behavior about my life and my. My world. obnoxious behavior. Yeah, your obnoxious behavior. I don't want you to start criticizing my friends before you even met them. I've met some of them before. Look, remember? I don't want to go into this now. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to help you. I'm suggesting yeah. that you can meet a lot of terrific women. And I would like to arrange a party for you while you're here. It just occurred to me that it was a great idea. And right away, you're already telling me that they're obnoxious and phony. They don't have to be actresses. They have all kinds of people who are directors, who are producers, who work in production, who are artists, who are painters. Okay, if you have the party, but don't tell them that it's for me or something like that. Everybody I know is divorced or hasn't gotten married yet. None of us have settled into what we thought grown-up life was about when we were children. Actually, I, I met a girl recently, a woman a few months ago, and I've been having a kind of interesting relationship with her. But, uh, you know, it's weird. It's just very weird now. Uh, relationships are so strange. Because nobody wants to commit to anything, and she's very scared to even begin to commit, because she's just settled into a life on her own after a, a certain amount of time of being in a relationship. And I, I'm, you know, me, I'm always looking at what I'm doing. <laughs> I've got a camera outside of me watching me do what I'm doing while I'm doing it. There's always a, a movie camera somewhere. And I'm uh, even in the middle of a real emotional scene and a real moment in life when I'm totally connected and totally there, I have a sense that, uh, you know, I'm playing a little bit for the camera and I'm a little aware of how, how this is good, this is interesting, how can I use this, uh, what do I do with this? Because for me, it's like turning it into art. It's sh 
she calls it my Trigorin complex, you know? Trigorin? Chekhov? Anyway, let me tell you this. I made a nice chunk of money for both of us, even though it was inadvertent. What happened was that um, I had some real estate deal that didn't go through, but the people put up land as a security. So you mean we own some land out here? But in this meantime, I've managed to get a deal where it's been sold to some other people that are developing a shopping center. And not only that... Wait a minute. One minute ago, I owned a piece of land out here, and now it's we, been sold? We. We inadvertently acquired it as a defaulted security. And yeah. now I managed to sell it with a good profit. I'm going to go over and take a look at it. Where is it? It's in Santa Monica. You want to come and look at it? By the way, this piece of land has some kind of old building, I think. It's some kind of, uh, I don't know, some theater or something like that. I'm sorry, I can't let anybody in. No, no, I know, I just want to look around. I'm sorry, I can't let anybody in. The no, theater's closed. Two minutes, I just want to look around. It looks gorgeous. No, it is. It's a beautiful theater, but I'm... It's a beautiful theater, but I'm afraid it's closed. I can't let anybody Wait a in. We are the owners of this place. You're what? We own this place. We you own this place. Own That's the theater? The point. the point is... That I is the like, point. That is the it's point. It's not the point. That's the point. We're the owners. The point is that whether we're the owners or not. The point is I'd like to be able to look around. Yeah, well... I, I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm not supposed to let anybody in. We are in. the owners. Technically, we're the owners. I mean, we own this we, thing, right? I feel... We, of course, we know what it's for. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not... I'm not supposed to let anyone in. I mean, you don't have to start getting... No, no, well, that's how you get in, though. I hope I'm doing the right thing. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to... You know, well, you know, I just would like to look around for a couple of minutes. I'm sorry. I feel terrible. I'm not supposed to let anybody in. No, no, that's quite all right. We own the place here, so that's fine. Well, yeah. I, technically, we own it. According to you, we own it for 10 more days. 10 more days? Yes. Well, well, we own it now. So if you want to see it, go ahead and enjoy it. What yourself. do you mean 10 more days? What happens in 10 days? Oh, the property is all being transferred, the theater is being raised, and the shopping center is being built what, what, here. The theater is being torn down? Yeah, yeah. You mean it's definite now? It's definitely said. The demolition crew is coming. They're going to level this place in preparation for transferring this whole block of land. Oh, but it's unbelievable. I, mean, I had heard rumors, but I, I couldn't really believe sure, it. Sure, this and all the down. adjoining properties. But this is a legendary theater. Do you have any idea who played here? Marie Dressler played here. Blanche Ring played here. Nora Bays played here. Fanny Bryce, you remember on the radio. You know, she was Baby Snook. This is an historical theater. My God. Do you know, uh, I have to tell you frankly, even your being here, when the accounting is made, I'm going to have to pay for the share of the time I still own this place for you, and I don't even see your function here. I mean, what are you doing here, well, actually? I'm taking care of the thing. I, I wouldn't care if the whole place was vandalized, because it's all about to be torn down, so what's the difference what's done in here? Mickey? Progress. We're going to have a nice shopping center here. Mickey! Yeah? Come look at this. You won't believe this. Look at this. Yeah? You're going to tear this down? You tell him you're going to tear this down? I'm not the one who's going to tear it down. It's all been arranged long ago. What interests you about it anyway? Look at it, for Christ's sake. OK, so it's a nice archaic theater. So what? Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the mightiest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should our warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wood and owe the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? We did Henry V here. I was the prologue. This is a theater. 
This is a theater, which is a temple of the story. Tell me your story. Oh, God, I'm so depressed. Why? I think you gave a great, great show. You think I gave a great show? Oh, I think yeah. I was never in my body for a split second. You're kidding. Oh, I feel so. You were fantastic. The audience loved you, and you were great. Mm -hmm. Your voice is incredible. You're nuts. I don't know. I just feel depressed. Why do you feel depressed? How do you feel about Valentine's Day? I don't know. I never thought about it. Why? That's it? You never thought about it? That's it? What am I supposed to think? It's Hallmark, you know? No, no. What? No, no. What's, what is this? No. What? No, what? Well, it means a lot to me, Valentine's Day, and I was sort of hoping that maybe Valentine's Day meant a lot to you, too, Danny. I can't claim that it does. I'm <laughs> sorry. Valentine's Day has never meant anything. It's one of those holidays that was invented like Mother's Day. It was invented no, to sell cards. No, it isn't. Okay. I've, I've had a real feeling about Valentine's Day okay. ever since I was a child. Do you know about how many Valentines is this, is I would Valentine's get? Is today Valentine's Day? No, next Sunday is Valentine's Day, and, it's, and I'm, I thought you'd maybe know, you know? I didn't know. How are you? How are you doing? All right, under the circumstances. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I'm glad to see you, but you appear once every year, once every six months, and... I mean, I like you, I want to see you, but, um, you know, at the same time, it's very disruptive, and, uh, you know, I'd like to have a regular relationship. I always know when it's my half birthday because I got my period for the first time when I was 13 and a half years old. Okay. Yeah, exactly 13 and a half. It was May 18th, and I got my period on my half birthday. Hmm. And my father took me out dancing. Can you imagine? Hmm. He took me out dancing all by myself, without my mother, oh. to like a fancy nightclub. And we went out dancing, just him and me. Oh. And he was the best dancer in the whole world. That's irrelevant. I mean, the fact is, is that even now I think about being 33 and a half or 34 and a half or 35 and a half because mm -hmm. of that best story about daddy. That's a nice one. But it's complex because at the same time I like you and I want to see you and I'd like to have a regular relationship with you at the same time I don't know and... You know, I know, I understand, things. I understand. I feel the same. I mean, I come here, I like you, I want to see you. You know, I'm frank about it. I don't commit myself to some regular relationship with you. On the other hand, I do really like you, and whenever I come here, I look forward to seeing you and being with you. I used to walk with my father in the winter, skiing places we went, uh, North Conway, you know, up in Vermont and New Hampshire. And he'd walk with a stick in the, in the winter, and the, the smell of wood smoke always brings that back with a big emotional rush. Look at what we're doing, isn't this? So? So? Can we have a good time together? Can we feel nice with each other? Can people do this again and again and think that they're doing it for good? And then the people are gonna come and get the stories and get more and build up over the years and then slowly that background will be a permanent fact in their in their joint relationship and then suddenly it's gone and they got to start all over again and that we're supposed to start all over again and do that again and that now it begins you feel like you start to tell a story and you think well I told this before it wasn't you <laughs> who was that what are you doing here mm -hmm. you know Oh, yeah, you're nice. Maybe you'd understand this. Maybe you'd like to hear this. I want to hear this one of yours. All stories have to do with men and women, don't they? Uh, if we're going to... Are we going to... Uh, am I staying the night? Or most stories. I'm talking about sleeping over, waking up with you, finding out what it's like to really be together. I don't want to have this kind of conversation otherwise. The condition is universal and eternal. Yes or no? Do you feel like having me over as a guest overnight? Yes or no? Tell the truth. Quickly. I can't. Okay. Good night. Sorry. Thank you.
You know, the Mohammedans cannot make a good story. In a Mohammedan world, all you have to do is say, I divorced thee, I divorced thee, I divorced thee, three times, and the marriage is over. Therefore, where is their problem? Now, with the so-called sexual revolution, we all only have to say, I divorced thee once, and the story is over. You know, maybe you're right. Maybe I need an old-fashioned story. A story isn't old-fashioned. No. You're simply looking for it. The minute you find it, you'll be happy. Get up on the stage, get your lights on, get your people in, and let's see some of that Danny magic. <laughs> okay. 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 We can get started now. I'd like to tell you why you're all here. I'm afraid, in a way, I've gotten you here under false pretenses. You all answered a mailgram which said, if you are alone on Valentine's Day, come here to this address. You didn't even know where you were coming. You thought you were coming to just some party. And uh, some of you, because my name was at the bottom and you know me, you thought, well, I was giving a party at somebody else's place. Well, I am. It's everybody else's place. It's the theater. There's going to be food upstairs all day long and drinks upstairs all day long. But um, there's something else that I would like to try. Through a weird series of circumstances, my brother and I find ourselves the owner of this gorgeous old theater, which was built in 1911 and which is not going to be with us very long. He, unbeknownst to me, made a deal several months ago, sealing the fate of this theater and consigning it to be the groundwork for a future shopping center. Because of him, this theater is going to get torn down. Because of this man. What no, do you feel about because that? I have to manage your financial. Hey, whoa. Serious? Aren't you people used to hearing the other side before you jump to a conclusion? No. Let's hear it. I know that. I see that. A whole collection of people who have no sense of reality like you. I thought this theater should have a chance, one last chance, to have something exciting and vibrant and alive and creative happen inside of it. And I want to take this opportunity to try to make that happen. Oh, good. We can really get started now. I was just trying to fill the uh, time until you... Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. What is this? You want to take a seat? If you are alone next Sunday, Valentine's Day, come to 214 Santa Monica Boulevard any time from noon onward, and you may find what you are looking for affectionately. Happy Valentine's Day, kiddo. Uh, what are you doing? OK. Everybody's arrived now, so we can uh, get started. I've asked you here because I'd like to explore something with you. We are all for one reason or another, alone in life. That is to say, none of us in this room is in a permanent relationship with somebody else. And I want to understand why. I want to understand why all of us, all of us here, are alone. Nature gives us loneliness, right? Right? It gives us loneliness. Well, why? It must be something positive. It must be something that nature wants us to have. Nature gives us pain so we won't burn ourselves in the fire, right? It gives us hunger so that we'll eat. We won't die of starvation, right? But why does it give us loneliness? It gives us loneliness so we will find each other. It gives us loneliness so we won't be alone. Loneliness is something good. Loneliness is something which nature gives us in order to see to it that we are not alone, finally. It is not natural for us to be alone. It is natural for us to be with somebody else. Yet our entire society, our entire culture is teaching us now that we're supposed to be alone, that it's good to be alone, that you learn how to be strong alone and healthy alone, well, on your own, autonomous, independent. But nature doesn't want any of that. If it did, it would have given us no loneliness. He's a crazy person I've known him for years. I don't know if it's something about today. I don't know if it's something about the lives we, we live. I'd like to try to figure out why it is that we're all alone. Um, in order to do that, I therefore if you'll bear with me. I have asked a crew to come here with me. Thanks. We are going to make uh, something. I don't know what we're going to make. We are going to try to... Excuse me. We are going to try to uh, document in some form what it is that we're all going through, starting, obviously, with me. Uh, <laughs> 
but I don't want this to be an egocentric experience. I mean, no, I know how this looks. I didn't get you here. I didn't get you here to look at me talking about me. <laughs> okay, I know all of you fairly well. How long well. Do we have to stay? Um, the day. I'd like you to stay all the day. day. You don't have to stay all day. I think you'll want to stay all day. I want to talk to you about some things that I personally know you want to talk about. That you've I never want to had. Talk about where the bar is. The bar is upstairs on the second floor. Are we getting paid for this? <laughs> no, no. There's a little problem about that. We'll talk to you later about that. <laughs> this is a party, for God's sake. <laughs> We're having a party, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to have a party. It's going to be a little different. Instead of a uh, magician pulling rabbits out of a hat or some kind of a funny guy and then, I don't know, some kind of an outfit or jugglers or blues singing or something like that. Instead of that, we're going to try to figure out the answer to certain questions. Thank you. What happened? We finished the film, we roll up. Okay, while they're out, I want to, seriously, now, I'd like to talk to you about this. Okay, can you go down quietly, please? Hey, Danny. I really... Hey, Danny. Look who's here. Hi. Come on in. With all these cameras, I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'll be right in here just dolling up for somebody. All right, I'll see you later. See you later. I really would like very much to find out if it's possible to come to some kind of answer about uh, why it is that we're alone. He hasn't changed very much. Did you get I it? Just, I share with you <laughs> my vulnerabilities, my insecurities, my self-doubts. I want you to share them with me and the camera. I would like to try to find out if there is something to find out. Of course, this is a little too cosmic for me. Is this a little too cosmic? Are we rolling? Good. I want to know why you're alone. <laughs> why are you alone? You're a serious working actress, respected, good right. at your work, yeah, all of right. that, but you're yeah. not married. You don't have a family. I presume that you'd like right. to someday have a family. Yeah, and I will. Yeah. So I don't, don't have this sense of panic that you seem to have. Uh huh. You don't think about that it's... this being alone business. Yes. I think, I think being alone is okay. Uh -huh. Maybe we should have you look more into the camera. Look, look right into yeah. the camera. Tell me this way. <laughs> being alone <laughs> is essential to being able to have a relationship, and it's a good thing. Why? So that you're not clinging to somebody. So that so that you're with somebody because you want to be with them, not because uh, y you're missing something within yourself. You dream different dreams now than you did when you were a kid about what life's supposed to be like? Um, I don't dream about the future anymore. I used to. I, I've stopped doing that. And I think that's a good thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Why are you alone? I'm not always alone. Uh, what I am is alone in moments, and I'm always desperately grasping not to be alone. Are you alone in life? Yes. Why? I like to think that it's because I'm in a phase, only a phase, and that I'm between great loves rather than as a permanent thing. Is it true? I don't know. Well, you might leave it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can't leave. It's important for me. I think this man is crazy. No, this guy. Okay, it's I just have to sit here. Yes, I just have to sit here and have a party. Meet people. Uh, you're I had a troubled training, you don't childhood, but that has nothing to do with this. Judith, would you take this? You look into the camera, do you think? <laughs> I feel like I'm being x-rayed. <laughs> Why are you living alone, do you think? I think I like living alone, and I want to live alone. And I wouldn't know how not to live alone. But you didn't think when you were a kid that you'd feel that way at this point in your life. I never had any real projections into the future as a kid. No. I didn't form. I mean, I had said, I'll have six children. What but it had that? no weight to it when I thought it, even. Really? So you don't mind not having children? No. And do you think that in the future sometime you'll be living with somebody? Uh, it would have to be somebody that I can't imagine. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You seem ironic. I know I am. I think I feel ironic. You've got an attitude. I don't know. Uh, right. I, I don't know what's going to happen. So I guess I'm feeling a little defensive. What is this party? Is this like the last rites for this theater or something? What, is that what I'm they're... afraid it might be. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a what... bit more than that, I think. Carl, you got an invitation from me, right? Yes. Danny's looking for something. You obviously brought a friend. Elena. 
Hello. Danny. Hello. Helena. Helena. Nice to oh, meet you. Oh, you're the only stranger here, I think. You having a nice time at this party? If you can call it a party. <laughs> really? Do we need to get this on film only? I used to be married. They still wear the ring. But you were basically alone in life, right? Well, yes, alone and not always alone. Alone when I want to be alone. Alone in the sense that in our childhood we thought when we grew up we would have husbands, wives, families, and in that sense alone. I went through that. I mean, I got married. I had a child. I did all that. And then? I don't want to do that anymore. That was enough for me then. I did it. Once I did it, I knew I never had to do it again. Yelena, is it? What do you want from me? If you want from me something that you want, it's in front of the camera. It's not what I want. Why not in front of the camera? This doesn't change the truth. No. Well, I don't know. If I were an actress, maybe I could do something in front of the camera. I'm trying to find a certain kind of truth, emotionally. Oh, my God. You are going to dig forever. If you are going to look for that. <laughs> Am I going to find it? Uh, glimpses of it, I think. Glimpses of it is good. I'd like some glimpses I of it. I think the truth. that's about as much as you can get. Are you a happy person? Happy. I'm not so damn. You know, to be happy should be like a village idiot, you know, to uh, leer all the time. No, I'm reasonably content, sometimes happy, sometimes extremely happy, uh -huh. and sometimes terribly melancholic. Are you married with children? No, I'm no. not married, uh, never was married. Not because I couldn't have. I could have a few times. I dreamed when I was a child, I don't know about you, that I would find somebody and I would fall in love and we would get did married you? and have children. I did and then it stopped. It didn't stopped. work out. didn't work out, that's right. What about you? I, uh, I think I was always frightened that it won't work out. How do you come to be here? Because they didn't want me. It's a funny way of putting it. Well, okay. Uh, Danny. Oh, Danny invited you? Mm -hmm. uh, and you? <laughs> I'm his brother. Oh, hi. I don't know, maybe it will work today. What do you mean it'll work? Maybe I'll meet someone and that will be my romance, even for a day. True romance, if last half an hour, three yes. days, it's wonderful. I don't think it can last forever. You think you might find somebody here? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going to behave like a, forgive me, American women, yes. but they are more aggressive than European girls. And I'm going to be, try to behave a little bit like an American woman. Uh -huh. um, I heard so much about you yeah. from Carol. Uh -huh. And I see my, it seems to me I know you a little bit. Not quite a lot, actually. I have to go, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Why, where are you going? I'm ju I just have to leave. I just have to leave. I'm uncomfortable here, and I, I don't know. I just. I'm there just goes a romance leave. for you, you see? Listen, this is not what this is about. Okay, I'm sorry you have to leave. Bye. Okay, bye. Thanks what for being here. What is this about? This is friendship. You kiss too much here in this country for nothing. <laughs> you really do. Listen, I hope you don't object to me asking you this, but are you feeling completely okay? When I look at you, I feel that I'm glimpsing at the truth. Thank you. That's, that is a real compliment. It's really true. That's nice. I'm very happy to meet you. I'm happy to. And we'll talk a little bit later on at the party without a camera. Okay. I was worried that maybe you were feeling physically n nauseous or sick, that you had eaten something that didn't agree with you, something of that sort. No, but thank no. you very much for thinking of it. I mean, generally, you tend to be a healthy person, right? Mm -hmm. Physically, at least. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Well, mentally, it's more complicated, too. Yeah. And you? Uh, well, physically, I'm a very healthy person, and <laughs> mentally, I wouldn't venture to say. <laughs> hey, Harry? Right here. Oh, Danny. Look in the camera. Hi. How you doing? Having a good time? Well, so far, yeah. I'm trying to figure a few things out, Harry. What? Like why everybody at this party is alone. Well, that was uh, one of the qualifications to get invited, wasn't it? Are you an actor? Uh, no, most decidedly not. <laughs> why, are you an actress? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You mean you acted movies? That's right. 
I mean, are you kind of a famous person? Yeah, yeah. I am kind of famous, but not according to you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You no, know, I just don't right. know Edith much Helm, about that yeah. field. I, I'm sorry. Edith I don't Helm, it's my name. Hi. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, drives me insane. I've found from when I was a little child that if you get into a real tiny, tiny place, the smaller it is, the less lonely you feel. Uh -huh. Used to crawl into cupboards, closets. I had a job once, they never could find me. They never knew where I was, because I found uh, like a closet. It was about, you know, maybe five feet, 11 inches tall. I'm five feet, 10 and a half. Never looked for me there. And I didn't feel lonely there. You live with someone now? Yes, but I live in the library. What are you looking for now? I'm looking for, I'm looking for someone to love me, and I'm looking for someone to love and give me a lot of space. Both at the same time? A lot of space, both at the same time, yeah. You think they're mutually exclusive, love? I used to. I don't anymore. Do you miss New York? I miss a certain thing about it, but I guess what I miss about it is uh, I miss being young the way I was when I lived there, you know. It was a different kind of a guy then. What kind of a guy? Married. How are the dreams of your childhood different from the reality of your adult life? It's not what you think. It isn't? I don't think it's, it's who you think it's going to be, or whatever your dream was of who you thought it was going to be. You play so beautifully. Oh, thank you. I've, you know, I've never heard you sing, but I certainly know your name, and I know people tell me that you're good, you know, but I haven't even, I have never heard it. Well, maybe you can sometime, but I've wanted to meet you for a long time because of the songs that you write and because of the way you play, so it's, it's, it's very nice for me. Mm, thank you. Real nice. Yeah. Hope they don't ask me to play here. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. You don't know? Mm -mm. What do you mean? Um, I've started to go into it and I've been afraid of it and started to get out of it and I don't know. I don't know which direction it's going. I just know that I'm very emotionally affected by it. Still to that degree, I'm in a relationship. What are you afraid of? The only thing I'm afraid of is loss. Yeah. Because when you're crazy about somebody, it's not easy to lose them. People aren't the only ones who are lonely. A theater can be lonely too, you know. Someone has to put on plays. There has to be life in a theater. Are you living alone? No, I live with two cats. You live with two cats? I never thought I would have been a person to live with two cats, but the way it worked out. I was married twice, and now I live with two cats. And I figure if I can get along with two cats, maybe I can get along with the next man in my life. This theater has given so much joy to so many people for so many years. It's been here since 1911. <sighs> it's been a home to, to vaudeville and to films and to marvelous plays that on tour had repertory companies once it was even an opera house. Please, I don't want to hear any more about theaters being torn down. Well, but it's a reality. I don't want to hear about it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I hope... Hey, you didn't offend me. Don't, I'm not taking this personally from you. It's just I don't want to hear about theaters being torn down. Step in, Jim, please. Hi. Miss Helm? Mm-hmm. I'm Richard Herbert. Hi. How you doing? You might have seen me around the set here at the party. I'm working on the film.
stop this. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I, I know it's terrible to you stop this. You can't put me on camera. I'm behind camera, not on camera. Come on. Well, yeah, I will just for this, do me a favor. Now, this is a big favor you're I asking I appreciate for. as a director to a director. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm alive behind, not in front. Well, what have you learned from this? Anything? I wouldn't do this film the way you're doing this film. That's something I understand. I don't want help. Thank you very much. I'm not offering no, help. It's a different style. It's a different style. Anything else? Yeah, there are a lot of lonely people, and thank goodness uh, we all can take advantage of each other. Go ahead. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I guess you've heard a lot of this before, but I grew up watching you in film, and I've always thought that you were the most sensual woman I'd ever seen, so it's it's almost a part of my emotional history. I just had to... I, I don't know. Am I, am I fucking up here, or...? Not at all. Uh, my cousin? No, Richard, Richard, oh, Richard Herbert. Herbert. No, Richard. This is not fucking up. <laughs> so you came here to find someone? Oh, I didn't expect to find someone, but uh, when but someone, what you're when saying someone is says... It? What you're saying is that you... I al I'm always looking. I'm always looking to yeah, find... Yeah, you look like someone who is always looking. <laughs> Do you have a problem with getting close to people who are in the production end of things? Well, the theater's going to be torn down, but that has nothing to do with me. It's, uh, you know, it just... Has nothing I mean, to it just happens Don't you to own be... this property? Yeah, I own it now, but... But then the... it has everything to do with you. How can you permit this? Because there's already... How can you allow this? This incredibly beautiful theater? Do you know how old this theater is? Because, you see, I'm really an actor. You might have seen me in some Cassavetes movies. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I like to... Jennifer. Oh, they're great people, aren't they? You know, I have nothing to do with this. I've explained this to you already. How can you I'm, have I'll nothing to do with it if you own it? That makes no sense to me at all. I would like you to explain it. Please. Yeah, all right, but this isn't a suitable time and... Uh... When? If they're going to tear this down tomorrow, this is the only time. But everybody is looking to find someone to... Uh, have you ever to... been married? Yes. Divorced a long time ago? Recently? Um, divorced uh, ten years ago. And this is so then, beautiful. I... Look at it. They don't build theaters like this anymore. Look at this place. Do you know what's gone on here? No, I don't have any trouble getting close. You know, uh, the production You're people just depend. You're every bit as beautiful as I used to think. God. When you were a baby. It's beautiful. Look at it. It may be. Look at the detail. Look yeah. at it. Feel it. I mean, this theater has vibration. I'd like to think of you as a friend. Get over this movie star stuff. Think that you... You and I might be able to develop something. I don't know. As friends. Consider it this way. You didn't know that I had this place. And you didn't know that I lost it. So forget as if either of those happened. So we're back where we started. Don't give me an answer. Just consider me a new acquaintance and let's take it from there. Thank you. God. I have... I had a drunken weekend. Uh last year just before the Cannes Film Festival, which I ended Usually, up going. Usually, I think men get, uh, they, they get divorced in about a year or two years. They get married immediately. They cannot live alone after they've been married. It's very strange. They all crave for freedom. And then they cannot stand it. I'm writing lyrics. Oh, Helen, I'm so glad you're here. I, uh, I'd always lived with someone. I'd, uh either had a college roommate or a girlfriend. I really don't know if I should even bring this up, but I know that you just broke up, so... Are you feeling all right and... Oh, sure. You are? Yeah, I am. It's interesting. I mean, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> Every freedom is very tough to bear, you know. And I think love is it's sort of like a car radio. I mean, you're cruising through life, and you have a radio on. And sometimes the music's sweet, sometimes it's not. But when you get to a certain destination, you cut it off. And sometimes it's more peaceful even to ride without that radio on. It's not that the radio doesn't steer the car. Love doesn't steer your life. No, 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 I mean, no, 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 this is two food of God's hands. For every little breast, you know, this, is, this was a person once. This was this reincarnated people into a Okay, then leave it, Tom. Leave it. I'll eat it all. You want my lady? You know, with everybody here being so uh, self-analytical and introspective and uh, 
discussing all the things about themselves, it, it, it made me realize that I have this uh, quantity that I have elements of my personality where I'm shy and those where I'm not shy, like somebody who knows me with my enthusiasm and my comfortableness with them, they wouldn't be, believe I'm shy, but I am shy in the sense of initially engaging somebody in expressing an interest to them and in altogether um, showing any feelings towards them. When I wait, 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 but I don't know that they're going to be reciprocated. And I'm having a particular, I, I have a reason, I have a reason why I'm telling this to you. When you first came in, I was uh, very drawn to you. I don't know, it was a strange uh, kind of mystical feeling. About me? About you. And, and then you, you disappeared and uh, I didn't know where you were and I, I felt a kind of uh, anxiety, panic. And I thought, uh, my God, she's left and I'll never see her again. I won't know who she is. And uh, I was really, uh, I felt terrible. And then when you came back, I, uh, it was it was wonderful because I knew that I would have a chance to talk to you. I'll tell you the practical uh, manifestation of it is that I'm kind of at a quandary of how to deal with these people here. I'm, I'd like to meet some of these women, but I'm shy. I'm shy in initiating conversation with them because I don't want them to think I have a motive that I don't have. And on the other hand, I might really have that motive. Furthermore, my problem is that what if they don't respond positively towards me? Then I'll feel very foolish and uncomfortable about having initiated something with them. And uh, that's just basically uh, the situation now, in a practical way, without going into the theoretical basis of it. No, don't go into the okay. theoretical. All Thank right. you. Okay. Thank you. I feel embarrassed because I keep going on and on asking about Danny and then... Well, he's, uh, he's an interesting man, but uh, I'd rather talk about you. If I could find some way that somebody would approach me, then it uh, would solve my problem. You, a got, you got it. You're a very smooth talker. But again, that's only when I get started, not when I initiate. I mean, I don't know how to initiate. You initiate? Look at what you did with me. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that problem with you because you're a male and I'm not at all oriented in that direction. I get it. Thank you. I get it. Oh, yes. <laughs> what you're telling me it really makes me more interested because, you know, there's an obstacle now. You are interested in Danny and I'm interested in you and it's, uh, there's a kind of drama. I don't know. I've always found it useful to uh, play the piano or play an instrument. You know. Yeah, and that works sometimes. Some women go; they they just uh -huh. they jump on talent. Other women jump on power. Is, is he um, really involved with the, that girl? I think so. I think mm. it's I think it's hopeless for you. Oh well, now I have my <laughs> obstacle. <laughs> when I'm in here, I'm 14. The moment somebody puts a mirror in front of my face, then I'm, you know, grown up. <laughs> and what I'm trying to do now is make some real adjustment between girl and woman and try to understand this. <laughs> Just try to understand how to get past being girl and into woman, being able to, to get married, have a child. I mean, maybe if I wasn't so busy being one, I could, I could, uh, have one. <laughs> are you lonely? How many people do you know who are 44 years old and have never been married and not, and they're not gay? I bought the rap, you know? If you grew up in the 60s, there was sort of this backlash to the 40s and 50s, which was that commitment is bad. It makes you unhappy. Marriage is a trap. Being a wife is a dirty word. Um, children are to be adopted, not birthed. And, uh, and I was good. I was bright, energetic, and so I created this life where I didn't have to do any of that because that's what the going theory was about how to be happy. All the time, I really wanted to be married and have children, but I was afraid to tell anybody that. I want to be married and I want to have a family. So I've said it now, so I get it now, right? I've never been free in my whole life. All I ever wanted was to really be free. You free really? to just say anything I wanted to say, free to just be anything that I wanted to be and not, 
and not always think about all these other things that are out here and not always have this voice that's saying to me, no, you shouldn't have said that, and then you shouldn't have said this, and then you shouldn't have said that. Okay, roll a camera. Ellen, look in the camera. It's me. Hi. Hi, you. Which you? Valentine's Day. It's another year that I'm not married. And uh, I don't have a baby. Yeah, I still think about it a lot. I, I, I think I'm getting a little old to get married in white, though. You want me to stay over with you tonight? I wouldn't go that far. Helen was my girlfriend. Why? I'd like to stand in line at a movie with her. I mean, what's everyone talking about? Everyone's talking about the, well, what I heard today is like, if, if happy marriages don't exist anymore, my mother and father are pretty damn happy. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what everyone's been saying here today. But you think these people are really that lonely? Hey, you have you been listening? Look at that broad over there. You think she's lonely? Why are you alone? I don't really think there's an answer to that. So I accept not knowing the answer to that, and I find that I can be happy by not knowing, by being in the unknown. Even when you got everything you thought of, you know, you can think of, and you can imagine you got a baby, you got a husband. And... Yeah. No, I mean, the, the, the tragedy is that you take yourself, and you take all your problems, and you take all of your frustrations, and all the things you don't grow up about into that marriage. I don't feel alone, because I feel very connected to everybody and I feel I feel a lot of love I feel that everybody loves everybody and I feel that you're not alone if you have that feeling I just want to get married someday and have kids like my mother and father did and all these people are telling me here are that because of this revolution crap there's no way that I'm ever gonna have a happy marriage or anything Go you feel better <laughs> I feel better now. My mother, I guess that's what it is. She plays like this slave role to my father, but she's so happy doing it. Those two people are so in love, you guys just don't understand. Because she doesn't know, it is, it's true. It's like, it's, they're like slaves women. And if that is ending, that means I can't have that kind of relationship that my mother's got right now. Joey, what the fuck are you talking about? Most of the men I've known in the past 15 years have been absolutely essential to who I am now. A lot of them have really taught me a lot about loving and taught me a lot about uh, understanding myself and understanding what's going on around me. I, mean, I saw two teenagers the other day and they were so in love with each other and they were so sure, you could tell by watching them that nothing could come between them and that nothing in this world could hurt them. If I'd been with one person through that whole time, I don't think I would be who I am today and I really like who I am today. I believe in 
soulmates of some kind. And I believe that you do find people that are the right people. And extraordinary things happen with those right people for certain periods of time. I want babies now. Nobody can do it for you. I mean, I'd like a boyfriend, I'd like a husband, but I'm hungering. My whole body is aching for children. I'm so susceptible to wanting somebody to do it for me and wanting somebody to come along and really help, really help me with everything I need to be helped with. Someday they'll come along, the man I love. <laughs> I really think that the times that we spend alone are for us to learn how to help ourselves. I don't know how any of these women have not said that they want little chicklets following them and pulling at their dress and asking them to play with them and, and do things with them every day. I just don't, I don't get that. Nobody has said anything about little children. I mean, boyfriends, husbands, love, sex, rock and roll, but where are the kids? Well, I don't know what you think of all this stuff, but I'll tell you. To me, it's all a kind of a ridiculous nonsense and a pretentious nonsense, <laughs> and even a very silly, self-indulgent pretentious nonsense. All the dreams I had as a little girl are the dreams that I still have. I think that I will attract something good because I am something good. I mean, what is all the stuff these people are talking about, their feelings, and they're so interested in themselves, they're so in love with themselves, and the whole world centers around their emotion, you know, and they're engaging in this, this sort of pseudo-group, third-rate group psychotherapy. Well, what does your world revolve around? My world? Yeah. Practical reality. At least I'll talk about concepts, and I'll talk about ideas, and even abstractions, that's fine, but not where it's all centered and focused on me and my feeling. And it's a party, and at the party, people are going around filming people, and they're all so in love with the fact that this stuff is happening. Are you in that category of people? Are you one of these self-styled artists? Or, excuse me, maybe you're a real artist? What's the story here? What do you think is important if relationships aren't important and feelings aren't important? What is important? I think relationships are plenty important. Don't get angry at me about it. Yeah. Here, you take over. Yeah, it's, let your fingers do the talking. You have to stay on the keyboard. That's right, just like something else. My mom was a piano teacher. Was she really? Uh-huh. Oh. And I don't play a note. Is this what you write with? Yeah. What are you doing oh. here? I don't know. I just saw you, and I've always adored you. And uh, oh. I'm so oh, a, happy to run into think. someone. That I've always adored. Really? Yeah. Well, the, the, I don't know what to say. I'm just kind of flattered and... I and, don't know either. And just kind of backed into a, my, a very wonderful corner. But I, I like being in this corner, and I like being next to you. So, should we have so, major sex uh, later, or what? What do you think? I, I'm just your basic semi-rock star, but you're like an official actress person, and... Uh... I'll see you later. can identify with what everybody's wow. saying about relationships. It's a, it's a great mirror. I think we're all wonderful mirrors for each other. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. I mean, they're all aspects of who we are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, that is going to bring us closer to each other, realizing that. Yeah, yeah. We've all felt the same things at this, you know, either at different times or share those feelings at the same time. I, it just makes me feel very compassionate, I think. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, well, it just makes me feel a little less alone. <laughs> <laughs> I found that when I was first living alone, it was very difficult to go shopping in the big markets like the Mayfair or the ones that have so many family sizes of things. And I found it easier if I went to the 7-Eleven where you just pick up like a couple of things of toilet paper at a time. You pick up small sizes of things. It's going to take a couple of years, maybe a year or two, to get used to it. But once you get used to it, you're really going to love it. That's going to be great for you. It's really terrific. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here all along? Huh? Uh, I don't feel like talking about it right now. I mean, you don't feel like talking about it right now. I need you to talk about it right now. You've got everybody talking about things all the time here. I just don't feel like talking right now. What do you feel like doing right now? You're standing alone. I wanted you to have a good time. I got all these people here. You always complain that you're lonely and you don't know people. You don't meet people. There's a million people here. Why don't you ever meet anyone? There's a tremendous number of girls here you could talk to. Women all over the place. You know, I met somebody who I really like and... Uh... Yeah, well, why aren't you talking to her? And if you have any problems with it, I mean, I can really help you out. I can teach you everything you need to know about living alone. I can teach you how to play Scrabble by yourself. No, truly, you put Edith 1 and Edith too, right, on the page, okay? And then, you know, you, you keep all the tiles turned over this way so that you don't see when you draw a new tile and you can fool yourself, and it really does work. 
Why aren't you out there having a good time? I'm not in the mood for it now. What do you mean you're not in the mood for it? Look, I don't have time to waste here, goddammit. I mean, what's so great about living with someone? I got all kinds of people. Did I tell you I didn't want to come here in the first place? Help Did I tell you I didn't want to come here in the first place? I want you to, be able to have a good time, goddammit. All kind of nonsense. You put me up on a stage. I just want you to have a good phone. time. Can you have a good time? It's the communication that I like hearing people say what they think right. and feel and, yeah. and um, revealing the truth, you know, what they're feeling inside, yeah. what all of us are feeling inside. Yeah. They're all aspects of who we are. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We are. We are. Think about all these discussions today. I don't know. I need a room, a glass, a cigarette to talk about such things. You know, from the time that you stood on stage and said it, I kind of try to avoid it or push it out of my heart, and uh, it frightens me. I don't know. It brings anxiety. When you're really looking for that thing to happen, I mean, that's uh, that's when you get most disappointed. When you're not looking, that's when uh, you see the vision appear in front of your eyes. Trying to touch all the time craving for touch and never being touched in, in that respect. When you're taken, that's when you see exactly what it is you've been looking for your whole life. It's really basically leave it to Beaver, uh, Lassie. That's the kind of stuff that really means something in life, not all this other stuff. Any thoughts on the subject? Subject? Being alone. Alone? The way I feel after a good leave it to Beaver, that's important. Expecting love on both sides. Me to others, others to me. It never gets any better than that in life. But it never materialize, materialize in relation to what you dreamed about, you, what you dreamt about, and what you dream even now. Do you think you're going to be alone for the rest of your life? No, instinctually I do not think so. I certainly hope not. I mean, I see others older as cautionary tales. So after a while you find solace in books, yes, in other people, in great movies, in art, it is. Very important. Are you lonely? Sometimes. I've never been alone. I'm not lonely. No. Are you kidding? Not lonely. You take it as a basic element of your life, the loneliness. Sometimes it's very painful. Sometimes it's not too bad. <laughs> I feel like crying. Never mind. <laughs> Long way off. Uh, yes, I was thinking about someone. Someone who's not around here? Yeah. You want to tell me about that? Uh, you know, I was, I was thinking, why, why do you think you have a right to ask me all these questions? Just, just because you have these, this equipment and all that. I, I came here thinking it's going to be a party, and now suddenly I'm being laid on a couch and ask all this. And you don't like it? Well, there are some things that I never wanted to think about. So. I still want to ask you what it is. <laughs> um, I, I might be able to tell you, but uh, as I said, not really in front of the camera. You pretend the camera's not I'm there? really trying to lure you, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you and I are here alone. I don't see a camera or anybody else. Well, yeah, behind the camera, don't forget. Uh, and I have this big iris staring at me, uh, you know, it's... Uh, look right at it, though. What do you see? Can you see yourself in there? Uh, no, and I wouldn't like to see myself in it. Mm. You like mirrors? I love mirrors. You don't? Uh, no, not really. Why? You look into the mirror and look in your own eyes, which is a phenomenal thing, you know, to really look into your own eyes. And you start questioning yourself and uh, all the answers are not terribly good 
so. I don't think one should look into the mirror too much. Just, you know, something like that. But What do you think about mirrors? <laughs> I suppose I'm addicted to mirrors in a way. Yeah, probably because you're in that profession. Mm -hmm. You must do what I say. Mm -hmm. But I hope, I doubt, but I hope that you don't look into a mirror for some other reason. When you're still, do you hear one small voice crystal clear saying, listen here, my friend, listen here. Well, that voice is your own and it speaks to you alone. You can count on me, it says, so listen here. This is you. This is real. This is truly the way you feel. You can run and you can hide. Oh, but sometimes, someplace, each of us winds up face to face with that little voice inside. So we hope. That little voice that whispers crystal clear. And we each hear the call, cause it's calling to us all. Follow me, it says, never fear. Listen here, old friend. Listen here, dummy. Listen here. You don't like the way this makeup looks? No, I like the way the makeup looks. It's just that you looked absolutely beautiful when you arrived. Really? You know, truly beautiful. Oh, oh no. fuck. It's fuck okay. Danny. Fuck him. Oh, fuck it. Oh, you're fucking a not you. <laughs> just a minute, huh? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just a nothing, nothing. Get Danny in here. Wouldn't he love this? <laughs> Let's get the party. Let's get the party in here. Where are they? I don't have red cheeks. You know what I mean. But you know, I feel great. You know, this is just typical of like you know, put your makeup on, take your makeup fucking off. The fuck is the waste paper basket? You got here a little late. Yeah. 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 Uh, I just kind of peripherally happened to notice you're walking in. Uh. <laughs> You know, I always thought that if anybody was going to play Greta Garbo, it should be you. I gather you're also in some kind of artistic endeavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that's the appropriate way of putting it. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you what do you do? Um, well, I guess what I do is pretty boring to you people. I'm uh, in real estate business and kind of... I find that very exciting. <laughs> I just bought a house in the valley myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Because I don't cry anymore. Hi. Uh, Hi. How are you? Who do I have to fuck to get out of this movie? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I'm not comfortable here. I just want to go home. You're feeling good now? Excellent. <laughs> this wine is great, too. Yeah. It improves perspective on things. I got the telegram, and I wanted to come down and see just that you were okay. And now that I know you're okay and you have friends... What do you mean I'm okay? Why wouldn't I be okay? Well, the telegram seemed a little strange. Even I'm starting to feel good, and it's difficult for me to feel good. Why? Um, just because I um, sort of interfere with the process of feeling good, and that's why the wine actually helps me. <laughs> now I can enjoy myself. I know what you mean. It removes the barriers that you yourself put up. That kind of thing? 
Um, it doesn't remove them, but it sort of dampens them. <laughs> dampens the oscillations of the barriers. Just because you don't want me to sleep over doesn't mean that you don't want to meet my friends, if right? If I hear one more thing about sleeping okay, over okay. or not sleeping okay. over, I mean, it really isn't the issue. All right, I'm sorry. She I never dreamed sh that you felt so alone. I mean, from everything I'm seeing tonight, you seem, you know, that you're so alone. Do you really feel that alone? Mickey, you know, you asked me out earlier. Yeah. And I told you that I had to work, which I do. Yeah. But I want to tell you something else, because you're such a sincere man, I feel. Smart and sincere, and I like you very much. And oh, I'd like to get to know you. Yeah. But that is that I mostly go out with younger men. Stay a little bit. Trust me, would you? Please, babe. Trust me. Trust me, I heard that somewhere before. I'd like to get to know you and maybe bring a friend by. Yeah, I'm alone. Why? I can't just live with somebody. I mean, I would have to live with somebody who understood me and who let me be the way that I am. That's yeah. a rare person. I didn't find this person yet. Someone who sees, who sees me and who helps me to see me and someone that I can help to see who he is. Um, is your name, is that a Slavic name? Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, where are you from? Yugoslavia. Oh, <laughs> that have explains you ever been it. There? Yes, I have been. I've traveled around there extensively. It's a very beautiful Hello, place. Hello, with your brother? Did you travel with your brother somewhere? I, I have so much to, to deal with my brother that I wouldn't do something, frankly, voluntarily like travel with him. You know, I've had difficulties with my brother ever since we were children. Um, You're much older than he's. No, I don't think. I'm a few years older than him, but even when we were kids, even when the age difference was significant, he always had to act like the one who's more sophisticated, more experienced, more avant-garde. Why do you more... say he had to act? Maybe because... he was. You'll find him. I might, I might not. What happens if you don't? There's still a lot to do here. Mm. Like what? There's a lot to do on this earth. There's a lot of work to do here. So being alone is not that important a part of it? Sometimes it is. Do you ever get very lonely? Yep. What do you do? Cry. In a way, we do have a close Are relationship. Are you always so nervous, or is it because no, no. I ask you about him and no? Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm not. I'm not nervous now. What, is, what this is is not, not nervousness. Now. No, I'm just. Are you when you're nervous? Is your twirling your hair a kind of a nervous habit on your part? Yes. Uh, yeah, I am a little bit nervous, frankly, talking about your brother. Oh really? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Some something happened to me. I think. Oh, something between Maybe, you and him? I don't know, between us, but from me to him. Oh, really? Yeah. This is self-indulgence, you know. But your country offers that to people. I think uh, when you come here in that affluent society and so on, you, are, you, you get spoiled immediately. You come from the airplane and you immediately fall apart and you can do anything you want, lie on the streets, cry, laugh, undress, dress. Uh, and I think it happened to me too, a little bit of that disease. That's good, that's good. Yeah. Stop the music for one second. I'm tired, I would like to go home. Is this party oh. done? Have you learned anything about yourself? Myself? Yes. It's not about me, I am a camera. No, no, you are not a camera. You are a person and a very lonely person at that. Okay, I love this, tell it into the camera. Look into the camera because I can't cut it otherwise. Mm -mm. You won't. No. You're refusing to I will not be manipulated for another minute. What have you found out today? That <laughs> you're completely crazy. Marker. Hearing people like you talking about the fates and about it's the other guy and uh, it's everybody else's fault, you know, and it just isn't what I believe and it just made me think, you know, yeah, what am I doing? Why am I expecting Max to, you know, make my every day so great and stuff like that. It's up to me to, to you know, fill, my, fill myself and give something to him and be there for him. And I mean, and the fact is, I actually do really love him. And I, this is so silly. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> nice to see you feel all this. You, well, know, you know why I'm real happy to see you feel all this? <laughs> why? Because the camera's right there. Oh, shit. That's I might have good. known, and I'm in profundities right by the camera, Edith Helm. <laughs> if 
if you're looking, Max. I really do love you. Well, what, what, uh, what's the story with Danny, anyway? If I understood the story with Danny, and then I could tell you the story with Danny, then I would understand it myself. And if I understood it myself, I would know why I was still here instead of at home. You think she is? Uh... No, 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 no. We're not, you know, we just met a few months ago. And we're recently friends. I know, I, I know how well, long you've know. been with I asked about you. I was interested to know more about you. What would you like to know, ask me, directly? I could show you major, major happiness. Okay. And, oh, it goes way beyond this almond. <laughs> Are you susceptible to women tears? You think I'm kidding? Yes, I think you're Look, kidding. Look, what are you doing with Danny and Eric? Why not, why not you and me? Why don't we go like a wagon train and we'll go into the West? I know that women are often blackmailing men. No, 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 I don't so believe on. that at all. No, I'm susceptible to tears. I don't think it's just women's tears. I'm susceptible to emotion, to the expression of emotion. That's why I'm doing all this. I'm very susceptible to my own emotion and other people's emotions and trying to understand what people are feeling. If we lived together, would you sing to me all the time? I think people's feelings should be mutual, that there should be the quality of feelings. Would you? You wrote songs about your last girlfriend, didn't you? Yeah, but she left. She She's did? gone. Well, you can't know what you feel until you know what the other person feels, because it's a kind of a constant balancing act to make sure that you're feeling the right thing for the person who's feeling the right thing for you. But you can impose some of the things on the other people. Well, that's dangerous. Well, I was trying to impose some of my things on you, and it worked a little bit. How do you know? I... Just because we're here, you mean? Oh, no, I know. You know? Yeah. You're very sure I'm of yourself. I'm old enough. Uh, mm. well, yes. Very yes. Yes, I think so. Is that bothering you? Oh, I love it. It's the best thing about anybody. You seem to have a very good sense of your own self. No, but I don't know. I, I, I was thinking that maybe I'm going to scare you away. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not one of those people. On the contrary, I'm scared away by people who, who don't feel comfortable with themselves, who are out of touch with their own feelings, or who are scared of their own self, who don't, don't know their own value, because then they're fragile, and they use your, your strength to hurt their fragility, and that hurts your fragility, and it's just a terrible mess. It, I think it takes two strong people to be equals saying how strong I am and I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm shaking well, inside. I'm sure myself. inside if I got in touch with it, I'm shaking too. I'm not yet shaking as much as I want to be. I want to be a little more out of control, but I have a feeling... For that, what? Well, I'd, I'd feel the truth of my being more if I were more out of control, you know? And that would give me a kind of, um, a kind of strength because then I could feel really who I am. Vulnerable, you know, open. I really like you. I really like you, too. Hello. Hi, honey. Oh, hi. 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 How are you? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. You two have met, of mm -hmm. course. Someone will take me just the way I who want to take a chance and won't give a damn about falling down you know you can always get off again someone to love someone who wants to reach out for a dream who knows happiness can much closer than it seems who knows what to do with a heart that's true so will you love me it sure would be nice not to go it alone I know that I can make it up Is it you? Will you be someone to love? Someone to climb on in the
the heat of night Who'll turn around and love me till the morning light Is it you? Is it you? Dim the lights, would you? Let's save them. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. It's not going to work. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what to do. Um, almost anybody else. Mm. Certainly very different than mine. And I came here to find out how it works. And you just announced that it doesn't. I don't think it does. Ah. I don't think you're sure of that. I think it's one of those moves. I'd like to know what you were after when you were asking those questions. You have a, apparently a theme. I, I was trying to find out why we're all alone, why my whole generation is alone. Is there something special about your generation? Yes. What? I think that my generation is the first one that has not managed to create the illusion for themselves in their own lifetime that they are not alone. I'm talking about feeling a part of a family unit that every day... Ah, family unit. Yes. Now you've got a theme. But of wow. course, it's a great, big, huge theme that uh, no movie can possibly take care of. This is a movie, isn't it? I hope it can become a movie. I'm beginning to doubt that. Well, you come a little closer and let's see. I have a terrible feeling that because I'm speaking to you from the back of the theater and because I have a white beard, you may expect me to give you the truth about something. I'm speaking from the cheap seats, not from Mount Sinai. <laughs> I think your question is very interesting and apt insofar as it has to do with the collapse of the family, the clan, the collapse of the community the community sense, and then the clan, and then the family, has to do with the collapse of faith, whether it is faith in something you regard as supernatural, or faith in the state, as Confucius taught it, or Marx, or as they believed in it in the first period of the kibbutzim in, uh, in Israel. Whenever there is a faith that illuminates people's lives, don't you think that the clan stays together? Is it possible for people not to feel alone when grandma is sent away to a home? And when the family unit is only two people and a child with a divorce either this year or next? Why? Why do people divorce? No, not why they divorce. Why they can't sustain relationships. Why they can't sustain intimacy anymore. I don't understand why. Why do you think people ever sustained intimacy? Well, they seem to have. My parents have been together for 55 years. Everybody yeah, else he goes off to work every morning at 10. And what does your mother do? She has a private life of and There you are. Yeah. She doesn't feel that she needs to compete with the man. Shouldn't we be able to be equal people and not be lonely and share our lives with others? Let's see. Up to now, no. Why not? Well, look at, the, look at the condition that the women are in. But why are they in that condition? Why are we in that condition? Why is everybody in this lonely condition? All right. That brings us to the great revolution of our times, which is the liberation of women. But by liberating women, we are freeing the last of our slaves. And for 15, 20,000 years, there has never been a civilization, ever, not including the great democracy of Pericles, in Athens. There has never been a single civilization which has not been maintained by slaves. And you know, it's only about 200 years, 200 years in the thousands of years that we've been here on this planet, that anybody has thought slavery is wrong. 
There was never a word against slavery in the most high societies, in the, in the noblest civilizations. Nobody ever said it's wrong to have a slave. We have yet to see whether a civilization could be based on equality. It's a brand new idea. Of these people you have been asking questions to, who were the loneliest? I think the women were the most conscious of what, was, what they were missing, more conscious than the men, but women are more conscious than men. Because they are missing something. Not because in the process of taking, uh, of taking those positions in society, which they feel they should not be denied, and who is to say them nay, they have given up what they've had all this time. And it's bound to create a certain sudden chill. But you said what they've had is slavery. Of course. Of course they but want it to give was, up but slavery. But it was a, a very privileged slavery. A slavery nonetheless. There was a difference between the field slave and the house slave. Yeah, but they don't want to be house slaves anymore. I'm not blaming them. So what's the future? There are several options. The revolution could fail, as most revolutions do. Well, we don't want Or that. it can succeed, as some revolutions do. And the winners will be the women, and we will be enslaved. But why does it have to or be? Or we will both be enslaved. We will both be enslaved by a conglomerate kind of totalitarian world run by computers in which this problem will be so peripheral to the general state of human misery that this is all a waste of time. The future holds many options, many of them grim, many of them irksome. Oh, God. <laughs> you're, you're, you're upsetting me much more. I was depressed enough before. I this. didn't come here to make you cheerful. <laughs> I guess I came not. here to see a show. Help me. I need help. So do I, Danny. You can't possibly be saying that this is bad what's happened to women. I mean, you must be happy that what's happened to women is that they freed themselves you sufficient. You know, excuse me. Excuse me. Where were you? This is Edith. You, you know each other, I think. I, I know this lady well, so well from the screen. I've been listening to Danny all day, uh, putting microphones in front of people and saying what's wrong and what's wrong and why are you alone. And you asked Danny who felt the split and the separation, the lack of family the most. And Danny said women. And I felt like it was a projection on Danny's part because I heard some women today saying that they were having a good time and that they were enjoying their freedom and they were looking for things in life. And I guess I'm, I'm limited intellectually, but I, I'm more interested in the personal point of view. Yes. Welcome. You'd be surprised how many of us are very happy people. There are enormous amounts of women friends that I have that are so happy now because they're finding themselves. Oh, well, happiness I don't know about. I've always been deeply suspicious of that line uh, the Founding Fathers wished on us, the pursuit of happiness. I, I'm not very much in favor of that. I think we should be full of joy whenever there's a reason to have joy. But I think happiness is not our right. Uh, it's, uh, it's an achievement. It's a bit of luck. I'm happy. I've had a kid and I've been divorced and I am alone and I'm happy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As well as I'm not lonely and I'm managing to do what I want to do, yeah. I'm extremely happy. Yes. Is there anybody who's miserable up there? <laughs> you are? Yes, I am miserable because uh, women are terribly dangerous. Women are dangerous? Yes. A fatal admission. I said something uh, to Danny. He asked me about... Uh, I'm all for American women, what they are doing and so on. Actually, the, the liberation started here and so forth. But I wouldn't like to be an American male. <laughs> it's not so much a question of being equal, but American women consider themselves as a failure if they did not succeed in the men's world. And it's wrong. I have to cut in. It isn't my struggle to be equal in a man's career. It's that, that what I'm trying to do is be less responsibility for my mate, you know, in that, that I have a responsibility to find my own joy or my own life within myself. But the family has collapsed because women are trying to do what men have never been able to do, which is to be both completely fulfilled in their work and completely fulfilled in their hearth side. So you Men have been a notable failure at combining these things. Why should women succeed better than we did? Maybe if some of us women have made the mistake of emulating men in our struggle 
for independence, and we now want to retrieve our power. Men have stopped being men, too. I yes. miss that male energy. Holy! Ah. There's a tremendous diminution in men's energy. Mm -hmm. It's yes. partly because men are sympathetic to the new revolution, and partly because we are scared to death of it. Yes. You're absolutely right, girls. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, I shouldn't have said that nice. word, should I? Oh, of course. Yes. It's all right with isn't me. There a, isn't, there, isn't, it, isn't it a no-no? No. Calling women girls? This theater is coming down tomorrow. Are you aware of that? That this theater is being torn down tomorrow? Are you talking to me? Yes, I am. What a shame. What more is there to say? There will always be a theater. No matter how many houses are torn down, there will always be a theater, and it may very well be a healthy thing that the old-fashioned theater is done away with. I've tried to make the point that we are doing away with a form of slavery. I've tried not to step on any toes. It has been painful for me in the last few years to say things like chairperson, just as it's been painful for me to lose the valuable word gay for which we have no equivalent in our dictionary. So I am sorry that our language has had to change with our revolutions, but I am not against these revolutions. I've only tried to point out to you, or rather to Danny, that what we are faced with is a dilemma of a deeply sentimental man and nothing more. Nobody knows whether we are going to ever have what he thinks is a happy marriage. The options rest in the womb of time. <laughs> you have to be willing to you let us see some of you that down, baby. <laughs> okay, now right. that we have him where we want I think him. Ask him the same thing. We finally Danny. have Danny where we want him. Now you must ask. Ask, ask him the questions that he asked us all day. Ask him, Ask him why is don't, he alone. Don't collaborate with them. Please. Yes. My Ask him Danny, alone. not only why are you alone, but why have you imposed this uh, misery, which <laughs> has to do with the generation of people who walk around holding mirrors to themselves? Why you have imposed this peculiar misery on your friends in a noble institution like the theater? Justify yourself. I don't have an answer yet. What's your movie? It's my life. From the testimony of these lovely members of the female sex that have gathered about you, it seems to me that you're the only miserable person in this theater. You were offended initially when I didn't recognize you as an actress. I thought you, were, I thought you didn't like me, but Danny told me secretly that you actually did. Uh, well, I mean, you shouldn't you know, do that because didn't. I'm kind of shy about it, you know, acknowledging that and expressing it. Yes, that. but then it made me like you better, you know, because uh, otherwise uh, you know, but you know, I'm too old to like people who don't like me.
not my key. Oh, that's very good. Have you ever been in love? You do know why. whole thing you don't realize what this whole thing's been about this is your valentine's day card this whole party is your card baby happy valentine's day and Anya, you got that you got this right in touch on her what do you feel oh what do you feel tell the camera what do you feel Keep going with oh, me. That was good. On. That was great. What's the matter with you? What is it? Oh, come on. What's the matter? Why did you shoot this? Just running up. We finished the film, we roll up. Sorry. It's a terrible time to run out, you know? Reload. I told you you should have changed. But you told me I should have changed? Yes. I told you I didn't make. What do I do now? What do I do now, Ananya? We go again, she's just run out. Call her, it's only a movie. Huh? Helen? It's only a movie. What do I do now? Are we ready? Helen! I can't go without if she's not here, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. What do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? You know, um, I don't think anybody can overhear us now, and I want to take the occasion to tell you something that I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm going to tell you anyway, and, well, I'll come right out and say it. You know, the thing is that I just really like you a lot. I just have that feeling about you that I like you, and it's very strange because when I meet women, you know, usually I don't like them. And if I do like them, I deny to myself that I like them. And if I admit it to myself that I like them, I deny it to them that I like them. And if I admit to them that I like them, then I'm waiting to see that they don't like me, and so I deny the whole thing altogether. My brother used to tell me when I was little that he wasn't really my brother, but that he was a Martian who had taken over the form and face and figure of my brother. I'm from the equivalent of Mars in a different galaxy. I didn't believe him. I told him I knew he was lying. But he said to me, if you look me in the eyes, you'll know that I'm telling the truth. Look directly in my eyes. And I remember looking him in the eyes and knowing the truth. I am not your brother. And the truth was that he was a Martian. I am what you people call an alien. He was a Martian. Did you get enough footage? Did you get enough footage? Yeah, I think so. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. I'll, I'll cut it together somehow. The fact that I kind of feel that not only that I like you and admit it to myself and admit it to you and don't deny it and I'm able to tell it to you, it's very strange because, you know, um, the thing about me is that I've never been married and I have a great difficulty with permanent relationships. Mickey, this has been the most absurd day of, I would say, of my life, but we know that's not true. I have an extra toothbrush. I'll bring it over and I'll leave it at your house. Just in case. Okay? Whatever's happened here today, 
makes me, uh, I'm gonna go back to my husband. When you go back to your husband, I mean, does that mean that uh, it, it's um, <laughs> a strictly a kind of... Uh, yeah. Okay. Because, you know, usually the no, women go back no, to the husband. Isn't. That it doesn't isn't. stop them from being available to me no, under the I'm circumstances. Not, I never... And... All right, wait, wait a minute. Sometimes you talk so much that I just, like, told... <sighs> okay. Lights. You know, endings, endings are a great American preoccupation. And happy endings, which is really what you're looking for because you're a sentimentalist. Happy endings depend on stopping the story before it's over. I think, I think you can give me help if you really want to. At least one thing I know you can tell me, how to make all of this work. All comedies end in marriage and all tragedies end in death. <laughs> and those are your choices. Marriage or death? And now we've added divorce. Oh, I don't like that one. I'll, I'd like to take marriage, but I don't know how to do that anymore. No one seems to know how to Put do that. Put on your apron and shut up. That's it, huh? <laughs> Put on your apron and shut up? That's the only choice? At the moment. <laughs> Put on your apron and shut up? For what is it? 20,000 years, all the generations that have passed through all the civilizations of the world have been totally alone. We come into the world alone, we die alone, we live alone. Love and friendship is the nearest thing that we can find to create the illusion that we are not totally alone. We've always been alone. Yeah. which strikes you as a particular problem of your generation. And I'm trying to see to what extent that is a contemporary crisis and not an eternal condition. Can I have a dramatic event? Can I kill myself? Sure. Would that work? Well, it didn't work in Hamlet. He gave it up and went on for two more acts. <laughs> <laughs> he asked a few of those questions, too, uh -huh. in blank verse. It's a problem that comes along about the third act. Don't I need a finish? No. Could I kill everyone else? By this time, the credits are rolling down and the audience, such as it may be, is on its way up the aisles. As far as this movie is concerned, it seems to me you've got your ending. Why? Because we have come to the end. <laughs> I'm glad you came today. So am I. Thank you. Stay a little we longer? We really can't go on recording this. Why? It's got, it's got too sweet. <laughs> I'm not going to say cut. I'll say cut. I'm a director. Say, cut. Say it into the camera. <laughs> what? Say it into the camera. I did. Could you do it again? You want me to say cut again? Into the camera and really do it when director. he says it. He wants to improvise and do it twice. Cut. <laughs> cut.